should connect pretty quick. Oh yeah. Plus it takes a while for people to hook on and. Yeah, for sure. And I'll also I'll add a notification to my story to say that it's live now. Um, once it's up. Okay. Yeah. There we go. It's loaded onto my YouTube. There. Okay. So. Yeah, that's all good. And then I'm just gonna grab the link quickly and add it to um, my my story on Instagram. And people, okay, yeah, there's people starting to join. And sorry guys, I'm just adding a link to my story so that other people on Instagram can find this live video and then we'll get started right away. Um, okay. Struggling. Okay, where is it? Okay, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> yeah, um, and then, okay, so now it's live on my Instagram if anyone needs the link. And then we're gonna get into a saddle fit discussion. So for those of you who haven't attended the previous live videos, um, I'm here today with Jochen Schlesa from Schlesa Saddles and we're gonna do a saddle fit talk again. So um, in the live chat, if you have any questions, we can try to get around to some of them by the end of it, but we're gonna talk about a number of saddle fitting things that will hopefully help you all in the future. Yeah, so. Well, thanks again for having me on your show and hopefully we can do something for your audience because yeah. many people have all kinds of questions and sometimes they get so many different answers and oh, they get sure. completely confused rather than really get an, an answer. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We want to help people to say, okay, think logical. You know, these animals are not meant to fight. They are most of the time very gentle. And when they react all of a sudden weird and buck you off or become nasty and bite you and really unrideable, it's an easy area to start is the saddle, you know, and not mm -hmm. always assume, oh, it's Monday and Monday my mare doesn't like to work. I don't think the horses <laughs> know what Monday and Tuesday is. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate that like a lot of the traditional philosophies with horses blame the behaviors on like them being like a certain way when so many of the behaviors we see in horses are abnormal and it's... That's it sucks because I think a lot most horse people I think genuinely do love their horses and mean well but they're so misled that it's hard to start looking the uh, like into other things and admitting that what you've known isn't correct so hopefully totally. yeah totally yeah. Did Mary Claire uh tell you about the um giveaway we have yeah uh, the, the bridal giveaway so for anyone I'm, I'm gonna post the link um I'll pin the comment in the in the top of the comments on this video so that people can easily access it. But for those of you who are interested in entering, there is a bridal giveaway and I'm gonna post the link shortly so you can click on that and enter it right away and then you'll be good to go. So yeah, they're, they're giving away a bridal and it ends on Saturday. So make sure you get your entries in prior to Saturday to make sure that you're on the list to potentially win it because the bridals are fantastic. I've even holding the reins is a privilege because the leather is so nice. So yeah. getting a whole bridle is sweet. So definitely check it out. It'll The comment will be up momentarily and then you can all go and enter now or whenever you want before Saturday. Okay. Yeah, so I, I have a question for you. And I mean, you and I, we are horse trainers. And um, rather than saying, oh, the horse doesn't like the girls or the boys or they have a bad day, you know, I find that the horses adapt very quick to your mood. You know, if you're angry and you're anxious, the horse adapts that, you know, and um, most of the time, um, I, I try to get people to think a little bit different when it comes to saddle fitting or choosing or saddle selection. You know, there is so many people who say, you know, so long as it fits my horse, I'm okay and yet they're in pain. So your whole demeanor, the body, you cramp up. You know, we know as riders, if you're rigid in your pelvis and you're not supple in your seat and yet effective, then your horse will notice this. 
you know, I learned that the most important aid is my seat. So if the rider has a saddle and wants to do good for the horse, but is already anxious and rigid when they put the saddle on the horse, what they hate because it doesn't fit them. Mm -hmm. I mean, right there, the horse will pick that up. For sure. So my, my number one, and what I always like to go to is say, you know, why don't we learn from the old masters? May I uh, share my screen with you? Yep, for sure. Okay, so yeah. when we look at the old masters, you know, oh, here's the bridal giveaway we'd be. Yeah, I posted the link too. So there's a clickable oh, link for anyone who's interested in entering to win a bridal. Because. Yeah. But if we look at the old masters, you know, um, saddle fitting, you know, so what does really saddle fitting mean? You know, saddle fits. I, I personally believe that the saddle never fits mm -hmm. because by nature, animal weren't, they weren't meant to, to, to carry humans, you know? Yeah. And, and when people made saddles was mainly for them to be better at war. You know, I can shoot a bow and arrow much easier when I stand in stirrups and feather in my knees rather than sitting bareback on my horse's back. I'm bouncing up and down and I have a harder aim. So with, for the war as well as for the condition of the horse, saddle fitting is, it's for me, I believe saddle fitting exists, but not saddle fit. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why so many people have so many different opinions about saddle fit. I wonder if we should, to make it easier for everybody worldwide to call it saddle checking, because yeah. everything you really do is saddle checking. You learn in the pony club, pull your numna or your saddle pad up into the pommel, mm -hmm. and you learn you should have wither clearance, but that's about it. Wouldn't you say so? Oh yeah. Like bridging and stuff. Like I was never taught like what a saddle bridging was until like a long time into um, yeah. my riding career and I would say for sure like my first horse the whole time we had him I highly doubt his saddle fit him properly yeah. highly doubt it um, and even the oh. ones after that too I, I believe if we get rid of the word saddle fitting and saddle fit and call it saddle checking more people would do it because you don't need professionals for it sure mm -hmm. I'm a, a master saddler and I have an academy worldwide where we teach saddle fitting but many many issues what is caused by saddles could be easily checked, you know? So what is the goal here? Well, to protect the horse and the rider's spine. One is horizontal, one is vertical. And um, you don't want to hurt the rider. Yeah? There should be no discomfort on either. And that's mm -hmm. what I meant earlier when I said to you, you know, if the rider is in pain, the horse will, will cramp up. Oh, for you know? sure. so, and there's so many, many theories on saddle fitting, but if you just, Think about it. What what do we really want? You know, we want to have that saddle fit that it doesn't hurt you or me. Mm -hmm. For sure. Is there any particular uh, part you want to talk about today? Because we could go into the Western world or we can go into the English world. I mean, yeah. people say, oh, what about bareback and treeless riding? Yeah. And, or, I mean, there's so many different opinions. Yeah. But I think Mary Claire said something you wanted to talk a little bit about Western today. Yeah, I think a brief, like I, most of my followers, I think are English, but I think talking about Western saddle fit for those of them that do ride Western would be good for a brief thing. And then another question that I had was just what you would like any recommendations on how to better like the comfort of horses for riders that have like one or one or two saddles and are putting them on lots of different horses. Like what would the solution to that to work towards B because just from my experience like taking horses in training is kind of it, it can be a problem because not all of them come with their own tack and obviously if you have a horse in for training you're not going to go out and buy it a new saddle and then you also have the problem of owners that don't get the horses saddles that fit and so on and so forth so I was just I wanted to ask about that and what people can do to try to make their horses more comfortable, essentially, if there's more limited options in terms of getting numerous saddles for a whole string of horses. Okay. So do you want to start off with the Western then or with- Yeah, the yeah, let's start off with the Western and then we can circle back to um, the other thing, yeah. Okay, so in any saddle, also on Western, you need to think about the saddle, English in particular, sits 
behind that bump here that's over the mm -hmm. shoulder and back there all english saddle scores there mm -hmm. but the western saddle passes the shoulder blade so it goes forward mm -hmm. here you see the western saddle see how narrow it's on the top yeah like a super narrow area at a very steep angle so this particular saddle would never fit this horse with these big shoulders mm -hmm. because the front part of the saddle they call that flare so when we look at western saddles or any saddles you know um horses this is a horse on the water treadmill so oh, cool and you can see how the whole back moves back and yeah. forth yeah it kind of goes like caddy like a cat yeah like they but, sway when they walk yeah yeah and um some western saddles are absolutely rigid in the tree yeah and some are very flexible in the tree so the flare is in the back where the arrow is in the back there. So when the horse goes, like you just saw on the treadmill, so it doesn't interfere with their loins, super, mm -hmm. super painful. And then in the front, okay? So, so cool. the flare here in the front. So where you want to see the Western tree, wood tree, plastic tree, raw hide, flex tree, doesn't matter. You want the contact there where it's in the middle. Yeah. So when we have that on the Western tree, you know, so, I thought this was a quite a cool clipping on a Frisian. Mm -hmm. That's super right? cool. And and horses can be very elastic, right? They can jump, they can twist, they can spin, mm -hmm. they can do all kinds of neat, cool things. And um, the big difference between a Western tree or packing saddle, see how wide the bars are? This is an yeah. army saddle or, or packing saddle. So you see it has a big rock. See where mm -hmm. that areas so that is so important that the back of the saddle doesn't hit and the mm -hmm. shoulder can move so many people think the saddle is like a chair the only saddle what is like a chair is this saddle here <laughs> to look close uh, cool. and that is kind of that german for a saddle is not a lawn chair you know or, mm -hmm. or like a sofa so this chair was made look like a saddle you know, mm -hmm. so you see the flaps on the side and you see the back panels there. But in reality, you know, we want to sit in the saddle like nature puts us. So if this is mm -hmm. the human spine, you got a pelvis and then from your hip socket is your upper bar, lower leg, and then the foot in the stirrup. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if you are a girl or a boy, you want to be balanced when you walk. If mm -hmm. you're a kid or an adult, you want to be balanced. You don't want to fall on your butt and you don't want to fall on the nose. And the same with the riding. If you're English or Western, you don't want to fall on the nose or on the back. So this alignment, okay, it is the basis of any kind of a riding what I do. If I do cutting, if I do barrel racing, if I do trail, if I have to hold on the pommel to sit straight, mm -hmm. then... I'm in big trouble. Yeah. So some saddle have this cable, see here? The cable system goes all the way through. Oh, cool. And that cable system here, you can anchor the saddle we talked earlier. How can I make a saddle fit the majority of horses? Mm -hmm. Let's say you have 10 horses to ride. You have to put them in three groups, left-handed, right-handed, and horses who are absolutely straight. And mm -hmm. I guarantee you'll find the majority of the horses more forward on one side. Yeah. Right? And that is very often more forward on the right side and the mane to the right side. Mm -hmm. And wherever the mane is, you got to have the cinch one inch further forward. Mm -hmm. So if you have a jumping saddle and you ride a horse with the mane to the right, you first you use the billets first and second on the right side on the left, second and right. That cool. stops your saddle from shifting and twisting, stops the horse knocking the rail on the front left or back right, and stops landing on the wrong lead when you have a jumping show and you want to go right and you want the horse land right, right? So if you have the saddle not girthed up properly, and this is why some Western saddles have a cable here, mm -hmm. so it goes in the right spot. That's so cool. um, a really cool friend of mine, Julian Kreinberg, 
right? She sits on the saddle the way you shouldn't sit, you know, really mm -hmm. slouch back, legs and toes are out, holding on the pommel, right? The back will totally hurt, you know? Okay. So, and what I love, I always love demonstrating that, you know, for guys, Western saddles, we make it always wide between the thighs. Mm -hmm. And then we make a pointy point in the seat. So my parts can go left or right. Girls don't have that space. And if you ignore that, this nerve here, called the sciatic nerve, will major hurt your back, right? So if your oh. saddle, Western saddle is super wide here at the base of the fork between your upper and your thigh, you will not only cripple your back, right? Mm -hmm. But you will hurt the horse because you're trying to lean and pull and jerk oh and trying to somehow get in balance and your hip is like, yikes. Yeah. You. When you post trot, you got to lean so far forward, you fly almost out of the saddle. You know, so on our website, uh, there's four free videos and Jillian is a biomechanic coach for rider and horses and she's very well known in that industry like you are and cool. what i would like to demonstrate is there's western saddle with this super deep cutout here mm -hmm. that's how they used to build mm -hmm. you know and if you however not built like that because you have a different pelvis alignment you know said well i can train no you cannot Right? If you have a straight lower back, long tailbone, your butt cheeks is close to the horse, then you want to saddle what looks like that. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a hole for your long tailbone, which is on the guy, and your butt cheek. If you are a girl and you have a short tailbone because you have a birth channel, but I'm very skinny, you still have a short tailbone because you are a girl yeah. and you have a birth channel but I'm really skinny. You still have a hollow back mm -hmm. and your gluteus maximus sits further from the horse's back than on the male. That is not my talk. This is just what I learned when I listened to not riders, not saddle makers. When I listen to people who understand the difference between male and female pelvis, those we mm -hmm. call gynecologists or medical doctors. Yeah. So on the girl, the hip socket is in front and the male in the middle. I have behind me a Western style. I want to demonstrate you with something here quick. Okay, cool. And maybe it's a, it's a good visual for the female um, and, and male riders out there. So I'm going to turn that off for a second. Okay. My share to, my share to the cool. side. So, yeah, so this saddle there. right there. Okay, so that's the saddle here. Get my wife here in a minute. And what I always say to people, when you sit in the saddle, okay, you want to have your leg just fall. And I particularly put the camera like this so you see just my upper and lower leg. So I can lean back, put my leg forward for sliding stop, or I can climb up a mountain, no problem. Now, if I want to give the ace to the horse, you can see how I move my thighs back and forth. Let me see if I get my wife in here. Mm -hmm. Be right back. And cool. then I'm going to sit her in the saddle. And show the difference. So she is um, going to ride now in the saddle because I say so. Because this is the best saddle. I'm a trainer. Yeah. And I get my saddles and uh, my name on it. And I make her ride in it. So cool. for us, nicely point, long tailbone, a pocket. Mm -hmm. For her, her hip socket here, like I showed you the pics, that will really push her and she will fall in this hole because of the short tailbone. So she's gonna hop on here, put your feet in the stirrups. So just relax for a second. So hold the hands if there are some reins, not on the horn. So you can see if I go up and down, mm -hmm. shoulder, hips and heels, not possible. Yeah. So if I ask her to post trot, but don't pull on the reins or on the horn, go ahead and do the rising trot. Come on. I can't, <laughs> not unless I hold on. Okay, then, then go. 
and hold on and then go up and down yeah and then fall she barely comes back. out and Ouch. then she falls back in the back yeah. now she's already whining so if i would be saying okay we ride without stirrups take your feet out and can you move your legs back and forth so you can see the movement is only the knee not the in the thigh cool yeah so if I'm going to go now and force it, I've done this so, so many riders and some coaches done it to me. Can you lift up your leg and grab her muscles dislocated like on a male. So the toe knee goes forward. Where do you feel it now the most? Right in here. Right in there and on the hips probably, right? Oh yeah. So how, what would you do to release that pain? Uh-huh. And here, <laughs> so, comfortable. So now, if you want to hop off, I'm going to open the saddle because we built this for therapy uh, schools. Cool. And then we have a lot of couples who said the male and the female wants to ride. You can mm -hmm. change the seat and have a female seat. Oh, cool. You can change it. Never so heard of it. Open this up here. Whoa. That's crazy. So this is the ground seat. The ground seat is made so it's pointy on the top for the guys. So his parts can go left or right. It's super wide between the thighs because we got this space. And then back here on the seat bone, nice and narrow because our seat bones is narrow. And then we create this pocket. Mm -hmm. So the girls ground seat, female, female okay. completely different. Yeah, that's so cool that you can switch them out. So on the woman, cut out between the thighs. There's a hole here, so nothing pokes us in the crotch. Much wider for the seat bones. And because of the short tailbone, it's be further back. Then on the fender, you can take it off. And there's different position for the fender. Cool. On guys, they always like the fender forward because our lower leg is longer mm -hmm. than the upper leg. 9% of all women have the upper leg longer and the lower leg shorter. Again, mm -hmm. not my rules. It's just the way nature made the body of the lady. So now if you sit in this one. That's so cool. Now her legs won't get pushed out. Let her leg fall first. So without even trying, it just falls. And there is that muscle, mm -hmm. what I tried early, because there's no foam, but forks are apart. Now put your feet in the stirrup, because the fender now is hanging underneath cool. her. Yeah. yeah. I'm just holding in case it's loose. Yeah. Is it easy for you to- Oh, very comfortable. And can you stand up? Yeah. And are you standing in both stirrups? It's not girth on, remember? Right. <laughs> Hang on. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Don't fall. Okay. Yeah, very easy. So she can go up and down because she doesn't have to chase her feet. Yeah, and all I did is change yeah. the down seat. That's cool. So if if you come off that side, now I sit on it. Oh, I can move my leg too. Oh yeah, look at this. Now we have movement in the upper thigh. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so let me sit in this now. Now if I as a guy wants to ride in that saddle there is no way I will ride in this why because my long tailbone and my butt cheeks cannot sit down I feel like I'm falling forward yeah and the worst part is the front I don't know where to put it <laughs> because the front is flat mm -hmm. so my my parts are now uncomfortable and I don't know what to do with my legs my fenders yes yeah, too down. far back yeah so what I'm trying to demonstrate here when people buy saddles, especially on Western saddles, you can now get the different ground seats. If you have one saddle, one rider, then you don't need to switch it. But if you have a husband and wife team, or you have a school and you teach a lot of people, why not have that? That's super cool, yeah. So it's now like you got the rider changer. not being in pain. Now mm -hmm. you have the rider loose. So where the fender, you can put it in a different position. And here you can see 
I don't know if the camera's in the right yeah, angle. Yeah, I can see it. A little bit more, there you go. You get a little leather piece here. Mm -hmm. So if you want to keep it full rigging, three quarters, seven eighths or center fire, you can adjust that. Or That's that super cool. Hang swing. And then sometimes that goes now to your question. I would like to ride multiple horses. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a uh, top rainer in my area and I get lots of horses. So then I would go with the saddle that has split bars. Mm -hmm. Split bars mean because of the new material, what is so light and thin, I can take, let me just put that up. That's a so bit. cool. I can take the bars off. So I take them off and they come in leather, sheepskin, or felt, whatever you want. Cool. And there's different stitches. And what I can do in those bars, say I have a horse really talented, but he's uneven. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can have in the bottom pieces inside. So each of my horses will get one set of those. That's so cool. And I can reset it. So now if I ride many horses, I just look for Billy. Billy gets this. Mm -hmm. Maya wants to have a super sensitive back. I get the sheepskin panels. So now by moving it in or out, I have the width and the angle or the rock and the length or the flare. That's awesome. Make. So this was so popular in the Western world. We did the same in the English world. That's so cool. Right? So not yeah. the seed, but the actual, um, well, bottom for the horse. Because many people say, what am I going to do if I'm a pro? I have so many horses to ride. We call them trainer saddle. You will get to get one of those because we wanted to make it so easy for the people that we go back to the old ways. Yeah. Professional. If you are a veterinarian, a body worker, chiropractor, osteopath, or trainer, okay, where they spend all their time on the horse, mm -hmm. you know, have a tool because that's what it is. Your saddle is your tool. Yeah. Your skill and your your what's the word i'm looking for your talent is your your horsemanship being around horses and train them but you need tools like helmets boots and a saddle mm -hmm. and if the saddle is so vital we will teach you in no time that you literally can take that saddle either in the hybrid style or in the exchange panel so the bottom of the english saddles you just change the panels and they Velcro on like that, like the Western saddle um, too? A little bit different. And the English saddle, they slide on like a ski boot. Cool. On the new binding. So it's all necessary because with COVID, yeah. more and more saddle fitters couldn't go all the way around all the time. For us, it's a project we started for the last three years, simply because we can't keep up with the service demand. Mm -hmm. I think we have lots of people who really like our saddles, but they get horses that come and go, they sell, they get older, they get more muscular. And now that the veterinarian says you should check your saddle four times a year, oh my God, I got four times as much work each year. You know, so we yeah. need to find somebody and says, what if we get help? What if we give the professionals the tool, the knowledge and the money, because you can then charge for your time. No that's that yeah you crazy sure can. that's such a game changer because then if you oh. buy a saddle and you get a new horse you don't have to get another new saddle no. and yeah but even between seasons with the same horse if your horse gets the winter off and then they lose muscle then you could have different panels for the start of the year versus further on or young horses too like that's super cool i didn't know that anything like that existed you know who was instrumental in that who? your generation yeah yeah oh, because my I'm kids crazy. are your ages and they said daddy you know you got to come up with something better like yeah. you constantly make something and we, we don't want to constantly throw away we need to be more environmental friendly mm -hmm. you no know, you don't need to spend all this time in the plane and fit saddles and drive around and sit in traffic and burn gas mm -hmm. what if we go back the way it was where the trainer you the soldier the the, the general let's say you have a students let's say 30 40 students you're their sergeant, you know, you're mm -hmm. their drill sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> so what if you know how to fit saddles, you know, yeah. the way it used to be. 
right? And they and then you check and okay, if something is broken or something needs to be replaced, okay, then the saddler comes in. But mm -hmm. none of this constant stuffing and all that stuff, you know. I'm not saying it dies and will totally disappear, but the future shall be for me is that people, as I said, various body workers, trainers got to help with helping these horses. Yeah, that'll make such a big difference for the horses too, because it's hard even with like clients to tell them like, oh, you have to call the saddle fitter to get them to like follow through and actually like not only book an appointment to check the fit, but then if their saddle doesn't fit, get like a whole new saddle. It's a lot harder. But then if you had these options, especially with the young horses, you could just say like, oh, if you get the saddle, you don't have to replace it because you can get the panels. Or yeah, having that knowledge myself too is it it's easier than to explain to people why their saddle doesn't fit or why it's a problem beyond just saying like your horse is in pain. Um, yeah. Because if you say just that, people will find other other excuses for why the horse is in pain. That's right. But what if you? I'm going to share my screen again with you. What if you have a saddle where you can make this? See how the yellow is all mm -hmm. one width and this yeah. is the rainbow. So this already exists. Okay, you already have the wind tax and there's approximately 25 saddles where you can change the angle. Mm -hmm. yeah? So they're all different. But yeah. there's not one single saddle what changes the tree width. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that is what comes on the market by end of this year. You yeah. be the test pilot. That'll be amazing. And now you say, wow, you should see this amazing, amazing jumping horse. He's yeah. from the track. I knew him from, from, for a year. But his shoulders are massive, but he has this narrow high withers. So you can actually make this tree really, really wide without hitting the tree, uh, the withers. So now the horse will just, what? Pops over the fence like you wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you adjust the tree anywhere of these, the height of the withers and the width on the side, right? And, mm -hmm. and align it, I think that's cool. The game changer will be not only in Western, but it will be also in English. Oh yeah. And that that's that's what I'm wanted to talk to you. Well, you know, yeah. And the incentive of having the horses perform like better and being able to show that that'll be what probably will get people to change the most is actually seeing like evidence of the horse in one saddle without the panels being changed and then with changing them and being like look at how much more like free their shoulder is because a lot of people require a visual to start changing their ways because mm -hmm. I don't know there's there's a lot of really old school things on the market when it comes to saddles which actually I wanted to ask you a question which I don't know if you can answer this because it's about a competing saddle company but CWD sells like their own trainer saddle, which it has pro panels and that's supposed to fit a wider variety of the horses. Now, I don't know anything about said panels beyond the fact that they call them pro panels and a lot of trainers buy those saddles to um, use on multiple horses, but the panels are set. So how would something like that work? Or is it just a, something where they make the channel wider and then say that'll fit more horses or how? How are these other saddles working to actually like fit the horse or is it all just kind of? Okay, do you own a helmet? Yeah. Okay, so now let's say you have to share the helmet with a couple of your friends. Mm -hmm. The number one important part is the length of the helmet from front to back of your head and then the width of the helmet. So if it's not wide enough, it doesn't go down. Yeah. If I say put padding underneath, you say, are you stupid? Because now my head is even wider and the helmet will never fit. Yeah. So the width of the helmet is important. And then last, not least, how the side of the helmet fits on your side of your head. Because you don't want to ride around the left side. You go on the left hand and the helmet goes the opposite. You don't want the helmet rolling on your head, right? Yeah. So that's the, the side of the helmet is the angle of the tree. And the width of the helmet is the width of the tree. Okay. Cool. So, and the length of the helmet is wherever the main ends mm -hmm. on the horse and wherever the dark zone starts. See okay. how this is? Yeah. So if the saddle sits in the dark area, you're sitting on these parts. Yeah, the weaker part of the back. Now, yeah. I show you what a typical trainer saddle normally is. I'm going to show you that in a minute, but I want you to look at the spine. You're looking from the croup towards mm -hmm. the front. This is the spinal processes. And these little guys here, Okay, they're very sensitive if you put pressure on it. Mm -hmm. On a Western saddle, every saddle 
every saddle is always a man's fist wide, right? So here, yeah. okay? But on English saddles, many, many, many saddles are not wide enough in the back. Yeah, they'll Maybe. be like this wide, <laughs> the old That's ones right. especially. <laughs> right? It's horrible. Yeah. So what a typical trainer saddle looks like, okay, is two to three fingers, not wide enough. That's not yeah. a fist, okay? And some, like you said, they're really, really narrow. They fit a lot of saddles if you keep that under four fingers because it hangs off the spine. But when mm -hmm. it hangs off the spine, you know, the ligaments, mm -hmm. sometimes you see signs like this, but every time I can do it over and over again, uh, a school body worker just puts the hand on the spine and feels the immense heats on the spine. If you have a thermography, you instantly see how narrow that is. Mm -hmm. And then of course, that's the next. So the, the yeah. kissing spine, right? So the horse will protect itself. That is not the painful part mm -hmm. because that just glues together and your horse jumps like a deer mm -hmm. and not round at all because yeah. they're gone. They can't what separate is, them. What is the bad part is all these holes down here and give you oh, a loud yeah. curve, right? So this is how long and big the holes normally are on the side where the spinal nerves come out. Mm -hmm. so when they get kissing spine this decreases oh. and now you have a pinching spine oh maybe he's he's a wobbler or maybe he's epm or maybe mm -hmm. maybe i only hear maybe so in order to fit all saddles it's very easy a you make it very long so it sits on well it sits on the shoulder blade as well as on the loin or you make it narrow in the channel here you see the spinal nerves they call that close pin fit. Have you ever mm -hmm. seen polo riders? Yeah. They have six polo ponies. And you need six polo ponies to finish one chakra. In North America, in Argentina, everywhere the same. In Australia, they only use four hmm. because their polo saddle has a fist wide channel. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Right? So if you stay off the spine, like I showed you, then the horse is back. If you ever look at a pony, Polo pony close up, they have no back muscles, none. Yeah. All right. So I'm trying to, all these webinars I do to educate people stop, don't fall for this, what we call close pin fit. And so more people like your people and our people and everybody listens to this. Only then big companies will change. Mm -hmm. So a profit has to be like, again, I go back to the helmet. Okay, you got to free up that triangle where the stallion bites. Mm -hmm. And you got to get as much weight bearing surface where the horse is super strong. Yeah. In the 40 is where you sit in the middle. Mm -hmm. The back swings, the shoulder comes. And you know what? If you say, oh, Johan, you just want to sell Schleser saddles. Every university in the world, uh, uni um, university who studies saddle fit. If the horse canters and brings the back up, okay, mm -hmm. the saddle doesn't touch in the middle. It will hollow if the tree is not wide enough under the D ring. And this is really what blew me away when I saw this. Okay, there's super narrow under the tree, and this muscle here, can you see that? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the spinalis. And if you have a nice horse, he's nice and soft. But now you're right in that saddle, what is tight on underneath the D-ring. Compare your helmet. You have a helmet, what is super tight on your temples. You get a headache every time you ride that stupid helmet, right? Yeah. So on the horse, it tightens on the spinalis and your horse will do this, pushes down the base of the neck. He's a thousand pounds in your hands, like heavy, heavy, or he rolls away from pain. You know, they mm -hmm. roll and bite in their chest. So if I have all this to my fingertips, it's on the internet from all these different veterinarians. This yeah. type of behavior yeah. is the last abuse when it's, oh God, I can't stand it. So yeah. for me, a professional fit, it is, um, can you put your hands together like this for me? And widen it like that? Uh, wait, this way. Yeah. Now you, this is a wide angle, right? Yeah. So now put a fist between your fingertips. A fist between the no, fingertips? No, like, like I do, just wide oh, yeah. your fist. 
And now make your fingers a hand more steeper. Not as steep, a little bit like, yeah. So now check out how much space between your fingertips are. Yeah. That's a tree width. Wow. Don't change the angle, move your hands together. The angle stayed the same, but the tree width got narrow. So you see that? Yeah. So now just widen the tree. Let's say you have a wind tech and you put a wider gallop plate in. The tree width stayed the same. Isn't yeah. It? That's the worst fitting you can do. But yeah. that's what's sold. That's what's sold as a profit. Okay. Right? Yeah. Because it just hangs on the neck and the horse will react like this. So this is why, you know, we got all the study. We got tools. You can slide over your girth and it measures the speed. That's how we measured our racing saddle. I told you the first time we met, you know, we can measure yeah. the heartbeat, the cadence, the elevation. The horse tells you, I don't like it, but this tells you exactly where a saddle pinches and doesn't. So if you have a horse, what has a, a really nice movement, right? Oh my gosh. And if you look at the base of the width, that's how much shoulders go there. Yeah, that's like crazy. That, boom. Holy. Boom. Yeah. So if you see it's narrow where your fingertips is narrow. How how is that shoulder do slide under? How's that gonna help? Yeah. So all you end up is just pinching and dry spots and all that nonsense. And yeah. the poor horse, especially on the racetrack, this is what we tested. Be mm -hmm. our team or an eventer or jumper. Or even dressage riders. They, the uh, advanced dressage horse needs a lot of air to, yeah. to to go through the stuff. So if your saddle pinches on the lung meridian point 13, the horse's pulses up. Yeah. The pulses up, horses run out of air. Yeah. So show you again on the tree so people can visualize that. That's crazy. Find one. So this is your typical uh, old standard. I'm gonna turn that off, it's easier to see. Yeah. So here you see how it flares away. That's when you make your fingers this way and close together. The distance yeah. from here to here is very narrow. Okay, so that's the tree width. Yeah, where the narrow. horse really hates it to be pinched a lot is where the red zone is here. Oh yeah. They hate it. That's where the D-ring would be. Yeah. Where they like contact is down there. So. When you did that with your hands, you know, your hands were the side of the metal plate. Okay, so here I can make it wide angle or narrow angle, but my fingertips are together. Mm -hmm. I, 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 they stay in one spot. Yeah, oh cool, that's super flexible. So here, okay, I can make that really, really narrow or really, really wide. And that's what the trainer saddle you will end up you will be able to make that any width, how narrow you want it or how wide, in any angle you want. That's so cool. And the best part of it, it's left and right side is individual, which means oh. if you have a super horse and he's been trained all his life, his young life, going around one side of the track, I guarantee you, they're uneven. The left yeah. shoulder will be bigger. And if the saddle is not fitted, it will twist and put a lot of problems to the lumbar area. Mm -hmm. So when you can make the left side bigger, you will not fall off to the right side. That's interesting. Can you, can you see that? I don't know if my screen is on. Um, it's not on. I can't see it. Okay, so let me just show you what I mean. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. All wow. right. So <laughs> if, the, if the horse is bigger on the left side, you can measure that. You can see it. So many horses are like that, you know, and, and it's not all oh, badly ridden, not properly trained. No. Some horses, check out this upper arm is completely different than this upper arm. Oh, wow. Okay. The horses is done in the skeleton at one half years, two years done. Mm -hmm. right? so what's changing then is the gross capsule in the muscles. Mm -hmm. But you will never change this. Yeah. No matter how good you're right. right. Many people say, I wonder why the people only gallop to the left in the vaulting. Yeah. In the vaulting competition, they only do this left because same with people who watched horses grow up 
who live with horses in the wild, they notice horses fight with the left side. They guard the right side. Hmm. Right? That's, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. And it's what also was pretty cool when you talk to an osteopath to say it's same like humans. They have their appendix on the right. Hmm. So when they eat, the digestive tract is on the right. And okay. Protecting themselves, they protect the gassy, blowy side. Make complete sense to me. Yeah. That's why you see a lot of horses are big on the left and throw the saddle to the right. Yeah. Right. So this is, if nature teaches us something, we have as a humans the choice while we ignore it <laughs> or we do something about it. And that's why I wanted to, to say to you, your horse you train, maybe yeah. in the shoulder width like this, and then you had him for two, three years and you, wow, yeah, what a cool trainer. Shoulder. Yeah. Now you got bigger shoulders. And then behind, that's the width, right? And here you mm -hmm. change the angle. Yeah. So you can now, at any stage the horse is, because this is the downside for you as a trainer. Yeah. Let's say he's off. Yeah. Or you got to go somewhere, let's say vacation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or you can't ride because you injured yourself. Okay. This is a natural state. You're looking from the front, elbow, sternum, elbow from mm -hmm. a horse. When you're a good trainer with a good saddle fit, everything else works for you. Nutrition, feed, etc. The horse will lift his entire rib cage. Cool. And then these muscles get stronger. But if you stop riding, nature will take over and it goes here. So if you injured yourself, you can't ride. Or the horse can't be, in, uh, can't be ridden because they're injured. Look at the difference in the angle of the withers. Yeah. And then, of course, the width of the shoulder changes. Now you will have a saddle where you can make the width difference, the angle, and this individual. Cool, eh? Yeah, that's a game changer. Yeah, completely. I don't yeah. want to see any more horses ridden like that where they're hard, hard on the forehead. Yeah. Okay? If we all want to really do the best, well, then we need to listen to the best. And these professors, they told me everything I love sharing with everybody because in the end of the day, top clinicians... You know, they, they, they say, oh, my God, so many people riding with the cramped seat. They're hanging the horse's mouth. You saw my wife, how she sat in the chair seat when she sits mm -hmm. on the male ground seat. Okay? It's not necessarily the, the, the fault of the rider. People like you and other professional female riders, they learn to compensate it. Mm -hmm. But you will hear my words again when you turn 35, 40, because your body then... <laughs> I'm gonna say I don't like that you run yeah. before. Okay, so that's just physiology. Cool. Yeah, that's huge. Being able to change the panels and whatnot. That would that's gonna end up helping tons of horses and save people money in the long run, in all honesty. Because mm -hmm. replacing like if you actually do replace your saddles with young horses, that is because there's lots of people who don't, but it it sucks but like i i when i had milo growing up you don't want to ever get like a nice saddle because they're like growing so rapidly but then you're not riding in a saddle that necessarily fits you all that well or yeah, and works and long the horse can't develop properly either yeah right? exactly yeah Let me another tip to your question you ask me um what can i do let's say the saddle i just told you doesn't exist let's say what can I do if I want, I have lots of saddles. What should I look for? Mm -hmm. Let me get a saddle to show you the key elements a saddle should have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just get a saddle to show you in your audience. Cool. Yeah, that's really neat. So the first thing I would do is look where the D-ring is. Okay. Wherever the D-ring is, that vertical panel, this is what I call vertical panel, because it's vertical. And then horizontal panel, it's what's on the horse's back all the way here. Cool. So if you take a tape measure or a ruler and you measure from inside where the D-ring is to inside D-ring, mm -hmm. you want to have a minimum for a profit, six and a half or seven inch width there, okay? Because back to the helmet, if you have a helmet, what's too wide for your horses, for, for your horse, for your head, it's easy to put a headband on it, mm -hmm. right? Because now yeah. you can make the head wider in order for the helmet to fit. But you cannot wear the helmet if it's too tight. 
Yeah. So this is the most important part that that is super, super wide. Mm -hmm. And then wherever the flap bends, where it's a wrinkle there, mm -hmm. okay, that is where every saddle tree wherever every saddle tree ends the metal. So mm -hmm. when I bend the flap, it can only bend where the metal ends. It doesn't hurt. And on used saddles, you see the wrinkles, mm -hmm. like your shoe, you see on your shoes, the shoe wrinkle. Yeah. Okay. So I have an old tool here, what is over hundred years old, comes from a company who makes bits and all kinds of metal for the horse industry, it calls the wither oh. gauge. And this gauge measures the wither angle and the shoulder angle. And anybody who sells saddles or makes saddles measures the shoulder angle. Okay, it's a very old tool, very simple. Mm -hmm. So when I put it on the saddle, on the wings, that measures how wide the wings of the tree are. So that I call that the tree width. Okay, first, I measured the tree width. And now I measure the, I misspoken. Now I measure the shoulder angle. So you can see that angle would be too wide. Mm -hmm. And now I go. Doop, 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 doop. Cool. There you go. That's the angle. Mm -hmm. And let's say you have now a horse. Oops, hold down. And this is the scapular. That humerus pushes the shoulder blade upwards backwards. This is the spine of the horse's shoulder blade. They call that mm -hmm. the spine of the shoulder blade. Cool. And then there's a flat spot where my finger is. And in relation to the shoulder blade, my fingers on top is the cartilage, which moves this way. Mm -hmm. So that part needs to fit between here. If the angle is wrong, Fair you enough. damage the shoulder. Yeah. If it's too steep, it catches the spine of the horse, of that shoulder blade. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Because okay. that, that flubbly stuff here, that stuff your nose and my nose or our ears are made out of it, mm -hmm. you don't want to break that off because so, it never yeah. regrows. So would you say then that like a lot of like front end injuries would be related to the horse like gradually wearing the cartilage out over time and then injuring themselves because of compensating? Because I bet a lot of horses are hitting the side, like their shoulders on the side of the saddle every time they go. All the time that's so sad yeah. you know when i saw it the first time i said i can't believe what i just saw and i was so mad and i never never wanted to see it again and now they put it on youtube mm -hmm. you no know? so people now see i want to share that picture this is from a event writer she's also um a vet and she teaches anatomy all over this world to other vets. Many, many trees are oh, too wow. narrow in the width. There's the deering, see? Yeah. And then the, the arms on and the wrong angle. So this is a horse on the side. He has dissected this just to demonstrate mm -hmm. how this wood tree sticks out. And then this is the cartilage. Same like your ears are made when mm -hmm. that is broken and damaged. You know, that doesn't regrow. Yeah. You know, when that goes, most time they have also problems on the side. When that Ouch. goes, it's not like on kissing spine where you can fix it. Yeah. Right. So that's why I always say, if I can give tips for professionals out there, find yourself a saddle what is minimum seven and not seven and a half inches wide. Then the angle here, keep it nice and mm -hmm. steep. You don't want it flaring out. Why? Yeah. Otherwise, it's like you have a helmet where the side of your helmet flares out mm -hmm. and it just rolls around. Yeah. Right? The second, the third most important part is you've got to turn it, you've got to turn it around and you've got to be able to make a fist and put your fist in between, especially in the back. Because if I do a rollback or an eventing tight course or anything and I need to turn, my saddle will move in the back. Mm -hmm. I don't care how tight you make it. I love saddles with three billets mm -hmm. because I can control where the main is. If the main is on the right, I use the first and second billet. On the left side, near side, I use the second and the third billet. 
Cool. So the earth will go in the direction, but your saddle will not get mm -hmm. because that causes you tripping on the front left or collapsing on the SI on the horse. Cool. Billets are super important. If you have long billets, make sure they have an adjustable clip. Oh. You have the swinging D ring. It just hits on the latissimus where people, when you get pushed here, you hate that. It's a mm -hmm. very sensitive spot on the horse. Okay. It's a cheap way of making saddles, but completely ineffective. You just lost the most important part, what the rider needs to fit, the girth. Mm -hmm. So these are the tips I can give you for now. Look for a saddle, but it's nice and wide between the D-rings. And what has a very nice uh, weight-bearing surface. So you don't have horses with oh, wow. super atrophy. This is typical when the gullet is too narrow. Yeah. All your polar ponies look like this. Aww. And when your horses have this holding line, check those three things I just told you. Okay. The tree width, the tree angle, and the spinal clearance. Okay, so these are the, the most important part when it comes to saddle fit because we see that with thermography, the majority of the saddle problem is always where the stupid plate is. Mm -hmm. So wow. you could say, well, I just beat my horse forward. Sure, you mm -hmm. could say that. I mean, some people think that is a normal canter. This horse has a complete oh my God. back. Yeah, and, it's and not moving at all. Holy. So this is, unfortunately, often horses who are super strong in their head or in their body, you see a lot of people are overweight on small horses and Arabs are so tough. They pay the oh, highest yeah. price. Yeah, they don't react to very much <laughs> like pain wise. They're stoic they little things. They are super tight, right? So yeah. well, think about yourself, you know, get yourself first the proper equipment. Nobody would ride in uncomfortable riding pants, right? So you start off with the proper Saddle for yourself, get the gender appropriate saddles. Then if you're a professional, get enough room in the spine and in the tree width so you can use um, saddle pads. Um, I like those shim pads. You've probably seen them before and have them too. Yeah. You know, they come in all various forms. Yeah, which thin lines, can, great. Uh, yeah. yeah, with and without it, with with a cup. You know, yeah. be careful with those. These, these ones here oh, yeah. twist the saddle tremendously. So if you want to keep retailers and saddle makers happy, use those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, useless. They're, they're not useless. They're, they're, they do a number on your saddle. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily I don't have those. Thank goodness. I used to use one of like the keyhole ones though, for sure. Did like you really? On, yeah. yeah well, we've had them right, in the past. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the older half pads are just kind of not the greatest the really old ones like when my mom used to ride she did not have a whole lot of options for like nice equipment and and half pads as we do now uh oh my bookshelf just fell down okay <laughs> so here again a nice visual you know make sure it's nice and wide there and check your bottom especially in the back for the spine yeah i hope that gives your audience and understanding that there is now the tree width and the tree angle. Now, I'm, I have to apologize. Uh, I did speak a lot today. No um, we just got into it so much. We oh, it's very give, educational. It is. <laughs> thank you. We didn't even give your audience a lot of time to question, but maybe yeah. they can send it into you and the next yeah. time you have it all ready. Yeah, I can make like a question tab for like the next one on my Instagram and then they can send in a bunch of questions and we can answer them then. Yeah, that would be cool. It's yeah. amazing how fast the hour went by, huh? Yeah, no kidding. I can't believe yeah. it's four o'clock. Yeah. Uh, well, it's one o'clock here. One o'clock here, yeah. But yeah, busy. Yeah, busy before day. we sign off, is there anything else you like me to say? Um I, I mean, think already, that's already awesome. About the bridal sale, right? Yeah, but the bridal giveaway remind people to enter before Saturday, and all the best luck to everyone who enters, because whoever wins is going to be a very, very lucky person. 
Yeah. That's the awesome. End, all about winning, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, oh. if the horse is happy, the owners are happy, and now we can do it without hurting the horses long term. For sure, that's the goal. Super. Well, yeah. thank you very much for having me on your show. And yeah. um, I look forward to spend some time with you again. Yeah, for sure. It's always very educational. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with everyone and taking your time to do this so that people can get all of this information for free and hopefully learn more to benefit their horses' lives. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Shelby. you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.